Well, I just uh, again, just ask the Lord to guide us and direct us. And uh, you know, the last couple of weeks I've been talking about how uh, you were uh, made to count. God has uh, created you uh, for a purpose, and oh, how we need to be able to fulfill the purpose that God has upon our lives. We need revival, church. We need God to do incredible things. Well, most of you know that the news has been dominated but the last couple of weeks uh, by uh, the situation over in the Ukraine. Uh, if uh, you do not know that Russia has invaded the, uh, Ukraine, then you probably climbed under a rock. And uh, I'm going to inform you that uh, that's what uh, most of the world is talking about is that um, we have heard this on the news over and over. How many of you have not heard that news? So everybody has heard the news uh, that we have uh, heard in the past couple weeks. And so we've seen the imagery of the uh, destruction happening there. And it's such heartbreaking to me as you think about the bombs and the invasions and we see you know that their lives have been interrupted uh, by you know uh, another country uh, it is just heartbreaking to see those images and now civilians uh, becoming soldiers and this is their land this is their homeland and a foreign invader comes and and begins to blow up all of their structures and uh, uh, and, and, and again seeing the children and then the mass Exodus uh, as they begin to uh, try to get on trains or cars or whatever and get to another foreign nation, just totally uh, leaving behind whatever they own and just pick up and go. Can't imagine if that was me. Maybe you can't imagine if it was you. Of all of a sudden, you gotta. You're either going to stay and fight, or either you're going to take your family and leave. So you got a choice, you're gonna stay and fight or you're gonna leave. And so they've, they've been both. But to see that imagery uh, there, it's just uh, heartbreaking. And so we know that, um, you know, uh, many thought that the invasion would never happen. For weeks they had talked about Russia being on the Ukraine border and they were just having military exercises and, and this would never take place. But yet, um, <clears throat> uh, the people, uh, many of them didn't think it was going to take place, but some knew it was going to take place. And, uh, you know, my, my heart was, if, if you knew that this was really going to take place, you would prepare. You would prepare a little bit better. How many of you know that if you knew for certain this was going to happen, that you would prepare? Well, some, many just didn't think it was going to happen. But, uh, you know, others just knew. Why did they know that it was going to happen? It was because they knew Vladimir Putin. And they knew what he had been talking about since the 2000s, <coughs> since the year 2000, 2005. See, he had been talking about his intentions. This is his intentions to revive the Russian Empire. You know, after the Cold War, so to speak, was over, some said it never did end. But after it was over, it was his desire to be able to revive or restore the Russian Empire. And so those historians that knew this man's life, he has been vocalizing this, he's been verbalizing this, he's been saying this for several years. The, the, the issue is that uh, many other nations and even ours has kind of pacified him and, and, and continued to trade with him and, and be able to build their economy or build their war machine to the point in where they could do what they're doing. But it's always been his uh, desire to be able to do this. He's an ex-KGB agent, and he's very evil. He's, he's uh, like another Hitler, if you will. Some say he's a madman. Well, he's not so much of a madman. He knows specifically and exactly what he wants to do and accomplish. And uh, many historians will tell you that, that they have studied his life. And so it's not just the Ukraine that he's going to stop at. It's just not the Ukraine. If he is not stopped... He's going to continue. Just like Hitler had a plan for world dominance, Putin has made it real clear that this is his plan to be able to revive and have world dominance, if you will. And so uh, we're living in a, in a time of, uh, of uh, uh, uncharted territory, if you will, you know, as the world. 
as I was uh, listening to uh, one gentleman, um, uh, you know, uh, some time ago who knew this man and understands Vladimir Putin, said for many years we have entered into World War III, just the world hasn't known it. That we have already entered in because this was his plan, his plan of preparation, his plan waiting for the right time, right, waiting for the right season to be able to make his move. And, and obviously we're living in the day and the hour in which he decided to make his move. So many have been talking about, well, Pastor Joe, is this in the Bible? Is this prophecy? Is this something that is coming about? And uh, many people hear different things about Bible prophecy. Your pastor does not speak a lot on Bible prophecy. But from the time that I was saved in 1983, I got involved in Bible prophecy. It seemed like when I was saved, you know, the first thing that I wanted to know about was the end times. I want to know when the end is coming. That was the first thing. The second thing was, is how do you live this life? But uh, so I would begin to read books and read uh, at that time. Uh, Gorbachev was uh, the, the leader of, uh, of Russia, and many believed that he was the Antichrist because he had the spot on his head. He had the mark of the beast. And so I read books about him and how it fit, and, and then uh, obviously uh, I'd pick up another book, and then another book would have a difference of, of opinion about the end times and end time prophecy. And so after listening to prophecies, teachers, after reading many books, I'd go, I went back to the Bible and say, God, you better teach me. <laughs> you know, teach me. I do not promote one individual over another one, but I do thank the Lord for um, the one that I feel like that uh, is worth listening to is Jonathan Kahn. Over the past few years, Jonathan Kahn has pretty well hit the target. Uh, he's not talk, talking about what's going to happen. He's talking about what has happened. And so uh, this morning, what I want to do, I want to talk to you a little bit about Bible prophecy, but I want to talk to you about preparing for uncharted territory. Yeah. Preparing for uncharted territory. So can you stand this morning and uh, let's, let's turn to uh, the book of Timothy. Let's go to... Um, 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Second Timothy, and I'm going to read a few verses this morning, starting with verse 1. When you're there, can you say amen? Amen. I hear mom. We're still trying to find it. 2 Timothy is right after 1 Timothy. <laughs> Are we there? Okay. You therefore, my son, and this is Paul, this is the Apostle Paul. Timothy is a young man. Apostle Paul's in prison. This is a prison epistle also. And he's trying to encourage Timothy. He's trying to speak to Timothy because he sees that his days are numbered upon this earth. Paul does. So what is Paul doing? Paul is pouring information. Paul is giving him guidance, direction, helping him to be able to grow in his relationship. And so... Obviously, we're not going to pull out a specific scripture, but if you'll read 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy together, that you'll have that type of understanding. But as we start here in verse 2, for the sake of time, you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one engages in warfare, engages or entangles himself in the affairs of this life, and that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in the athletic, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first, must first uh, to partake in the crops. Consider what I say. And, and may the Lord give you understanding in all these things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. For in which I suffer trouble and an evildoer even to the point of chains. 
But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying. If we die with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words of, to no profit, to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly divided the word of truth. I'm going to stop right there and drop down to chapter 3, verse 1. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godly, but denying its power. And from such people, turn away. I'm going to stop right there. Paul, speaking to Timothy, Paul, helping us to know how to prepare for what's to come. How to prepare for what's to come. Paul was saying to Timothy, this is what you need to do. Here's some of the things you're going to face. You need to prepare for the things that you're about to face. And I believe that God is saying to his church, we need to prepare for what we're about to face. Prepare. Not in fear, but in faith. Yes. Not with a frown, but with a smile. Amen. Because our God is God. Amen. Father, this morning we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit. God, I know that your spirit is always wanting us to hear what you are saying. And that is our desire, God, that our ears will be open, our hearts will be able to receive. God, we pray that you would just help us. God, that we are all built up in our most holy faith. God, in you, Lord God, we just pray today, that God, that you would minister in a powerful way. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen and amen. You may be seated. Now, with the words that I've just read, back to is this invasion from Russia to the Ukraine, is it in the Bible? Well, again, from the time that I was uh, saved, I would listen to these teachers, prophecy teachers, and my brother-in-law's dad, Mr. Basil Bennett, he was a prophecy teacher. And I remember going and listening to him and he was always saying, keep your eye on Russia, because Russia one day will form an alliance with the Islamic countries, and they will make their move one day. Where do we find that? Well, if you're writing it down, you go to Ezekiel 38 and 39. Ezekiel 38 and 39. And you'll look in these passages of scriptures, and you'll see that Ezekiel 38 and 39 follows Ezekiel chapter 37. Well, what is chapter 37? Well, we preach on that quite often, talking about the dry bones, to prophesy to the dry bones, you know, and he's saying, hey, can these dry bones live? And God was asking Ezekiel that question, and then he says, God, you know, but what he was speaking about was the resurrection of the nation of Israel. And the reforming of Israel. And so it was prophesied that uh, through Jeremiah, we've been talking about how Jerusalem was going to be destroyed. Israel was going to be put aside. But yet in the last days that they are going to be risen up. God is going to do this. And we see that that was in Ezekiel 38. Uh, excuse me, Ezekiel 37. About the resurrection and the restoration of Israel. 
And so God always is going to foretell what he's going to do. How does he foretell what he's going to do? He always foretells what he's going to do through his word. We just need to have ears to hear. And so God spoke to the nation of Israel and God was speaking to the world because he's given us this Bible. He's given us his scripture to know that I am God. I'm the creator of all things. I know what's going to happen today, tomorrow, and all eternity. Aren't you glad that we serve the true and the living God? Amen. But we find here that uh, Israel is going to be restored. Well, in 48, 1948, we know that the nation of Israel become a nation again. For centuries, it lay desolate for centuries. So those dry bones came to life. Well, if you see Ezekiel 38, then Ezekiel uh, 38 and 39 follows, follows that chapter. And then it talks about Gog and Magog and Tumor and uh, some of the scriptures, uh, the Prince of Rush, Meseth, Tubal. You know, in the last days that they're going to come against Israel. And so we know that the six-day six war took place right after Israel's resurrection, if you will. And then these nations come against Israel and God's mighty power, you know, revived, restored, defeated the enemies. And Israel is still a nation today. And so as we see the prophecies being fulfilled, we see that God's prophetic word is going to continue to be fulfilled. So we get to Gog and Magog and these areas. Well, this is, this is modern day Russia. Gog and Magog is modern day Russia, Iran, Syria, Turkey, uh, up in this area, even some parts of northern um, Egypt. And so he's talking about modern day nations. And in the last days, they're going to come down. If you read the chapters, uh, you take the time, but there's no way that I can share all that needs to be shared about Bible prophecy and Gog and Magog, you need to read it for yourself. You need to take time, ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you. But the Bible says that uh, they'll have an evil thought. An evil thought will come into his mind. And obviously, this evil thought has been in Vladimir Putin for a, quite a while. And it says that he's going to come down against unwalled village and people that are not suspected. And so could this be, you know, the first move? Many believe that it is the first move, you know, that he's not going to stop there, but he's going to continue to move not only to that area, but we know that um, um, obviously there's an alliance between China. There's an alliance between Iran. There's an alliance between uh, Russia and some of the uh, Syria and some of the other places. Uh, Iran has been threatening Israel and the United States for many years. You've read about it, most of you, if you're paying attention, they've threatened. We're gonna wipe Israel off the map. Hello? They've been saying that uh, for, for many, many years. Well, obviously Russia has nuclear capabilities and Iran is trying to get nuclear capabilities. And so obviously we find that if these nations succeed, uh, what a mess the world is going to be in. We know about the Holocaust. We know the damage that Hitler did in Europe and, and around the world. We know about all of the Jews that was annihilated. See, this isn't fiction. This is fact. This is stuff that really happened. So God is saying that the day is going to come when these nations are going to move south and they're going to come against the nation of Israel. And they're going to come against God's chosen people. But the good news is that God says that they're going to come, and many call this the Battle of Armageddon. How many of you have heard of the Battle of Armageddon? We've heard about it for many, many years. Well, many believe that this is the Battle of Armageddon. When they come down, and then they're going to be successful. You need to read all of the books in the Old Testament to be able to understand the prophecy. But they're going to have success, and they're going to come down. And they're going to do a lot of destruction. But the good news is that God himself supernaturally is going to destroy them all. God is going to destroy. In other words, God's going to show up and God is going to show off. See, for many years, he's kind of been quiet. But God made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God made a covenant with David. And listen, God made a covenant with Israel. And so God loves his people. He's not finished with Israel. 
But yet Israel basically has not received Jesus as Messiah. That's right. so, the, so the point is, is that God is going to reveal himself, though Russia, though Iran, and though the, these nations are going to come, God's going to show up and show up. Yes. And supernaturally, he's going to destroy them. He's going to destroy these nations. But yet that has not happened yet, but it's prophesied. Well, Pastor Joe, is this going to happen? Well, if you read in Isaiah, Isaiah prophesied the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. It happened. Yeah. Isaiah prophesied the birth in 9, 11, and then Isaiah prophesied in um, 53 about the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 61 about the work of the Spirit of God working in Jesus. So we see that it was all prophesied in the book of Isaiah. It, in Jeremiah and Isaiah, it was prophesied about the Messiah coming and establishing a new covenant. And obviously, Jesus came. He was born of a virgin. Can we say amen? He came. He showed himself uh, miraculous. He was the son of God, and he was God in the flesh. And he did miraculous things. We see that in Isaiah 53 and then Psalms 22, we read about the death and the burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so the word of God spoke about it. The word of God prophesied and, and, and it came about. And so we find the death, burial and the resurrection. Everything that was prophesied in Isaiah came to pass. Daniel prophesied about kingdoms coming and kingdoms going. And so there's too much this morning to be able to get into, but uh, getting back to Ezekiel 38 and 39, yes, it's prophesied in the Bible that Russia and these nations is going to do this. And so we find that God knows, God knows and God understands what's going to happen and why it's going to happen. Uh, many are so curious about where the United States is in Bible prophecy. Well, when you find out, or when I find out, I'll let you know specifically. Have my thoughts and opinions, but it's not the Word of God. I don't believe that man should be given their thoughts and opinions and speculations. I believe that we need to know what thus saith the Lord and repeat what thus saith the Lord. Can we say amen? Amen. But we know that as we read in, 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 this, uh, in the scriptures, is that God is going to fulfill all prophecy. And let me stop and remind you also that Jesus prophesied some things. Okay? In Matthew 24, Jesus prophesied about the end times. His disciples came to him and said, hey, what about the end times? Well, read in, uh, in Matthew 24, and Jesus spoke about the end times. And he also said that no man knows the day and the hour in which this is going to take place. What? The return of the Lord Jesus Christ. But then you read in Matthew 25, and it talks about the five wise and the five foolish virgins. Five was wise. In other words, they were prepared. And five was foolish, and they weren't prepared. What was, the, uh, what was the issue? Well, five had oil, and five did not. Oil being a representation of the Holy Spirit. Listen, you must be born again. I said you must be born again. You know, as many are led of the Spirit of God, they are called the sons of God. But Jesus warned them that, uh, you know, he's going to come back in a time in which no man knows. But he's given us some signs. He said that I'm going to come back just like in the days of Noah. How many of you have read about the days of Noah? In his Genesis chapter 6, he speaks of how every imagination of man was evil. It's a sad chapter where God says that I even repent that I made, it, made man. That's, that's sad. But yet we see, you know, the correlation of in the days of Noah versus what Paul spoke to Timothy. You know, in the last days are going to be perilous times. 
and so perilous times. And we see what's going on in our nation. And I'm not going to go through all of the laundry list, but you see, you hear it every day. This is what's happening in our schools and in our universities and what's happening in our government. In other words, we are in trouble and we need God. Amen. I said, we need God. And I know some people, and I understand, and I keep having to reiterate this. We're going to vote, and we're going to do the best we good, can to be able to have godly people. But listen, it's going to take more than a vote to change this nation. Amen. It's, it's rude, and we're so evil now in all of our actions and what we're doing. It's just unbearable. The corruption is so deep. You know, Trump ran because he's going to drain the swamp. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, the swamp is deeper than anybody could ever understand because they need to be born again. They need to be changed. Yeah. We yeah. need to repent. I said we need to repent yeah. of a nation. We need to repent yeah. and turn back to God. But yet we find that there, we're living in the perilous times even today, and it's all uh, coming uh, to pass. But yet we just continue to pray for the United States of America. The United States of America has always been, uh, you know, birthed through, you know, godly men and women. The Bible was the first book that was printed in our school system and required reading. We one nation under God. But we know in the last days we've seen that more and more and more we see that America turning away from God taking the Ten Commandments out of the school, no prayer in school, and then, you know, if you even speak about, you know, anything religious uh, or, or the Lord Jesus Christ, you're, you're, you're a bigot or a radical, and, and you're, you're a crazy. How many of you know that you're all crazies? Every one of us are crazies. I mean, we really are. Why are you a crazy? Because we believe Jesus is the only way. We believe that he's the way, the truth, and the life. We believe that nobody is going to heaven except through Jesus. How many of you believe that? How many of you believe that he's the only one? How many of you know that you're a radical? You're a radical. You know, but America now don't even want to hear what thus saith the Lord. Turning to death ear. So my concern is the judgment that's coming upon America. The judgment is now coming upon America. America. And listen, it's not just you and, you and, and, and I, you know, it's, it's the nation that's going to suffer the consequences. And we see our sons and our daughters and we see our granddaughters and all of our children and people, you know, when, uh, you know, righteousness rules the nature, nation that is exalted. Amen. But when sin dominates, it's so sad to see that nation. And so America has continued to go down into the sewer. So our, our prayer and our, our, our desire is to be able to, uh, you know, pray and ask God to help us. See, this isn't a shouting mess message this morning. This is a message that I believe that God somehow or another has to get to our ear. It's got to get our attention. How many of you know that sometimes, I don't know about you, but when I wasn't listening, you know, somebody would grab your ear and say, listen, Anybody ever have anybody, a family member, grab your ear and say, are you listening? And I think God is saying, are you listening? Are you listening? And so we find that Paul is speaking to Timothy and he is prophesying. Here's what's going to happen. We talk about Jesus, you know, and the prophecies that he has spoken. And I can say that every one of them that he has spoken about has come to pass. So why will not the other prophecies come to pass? Are you with me, church? Are you with me today? So, Pastor Joe, are you saying this to depress me? Are you saying this to discourage me? I am not, not by no means. What I'm saying it is it's time to prepare. Prepare. So how do you prepare? Well, if you listen to some people, well, go get your guns and go get food and stock up and, you know, you know build you a fallout shelter and you know, hibernate, and if you listen to some, you know, uh, that, that's their way of preparation. But that is not the way of preparation for the people of God. Can we say amen? The way that we prepare, number one, number one, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. Fall in love with Jesus. Can we say amen? Amen. Tell your neighbor, we need to fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with him. 
When you, you know, we used to sing this song, I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the day go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. Now, Rhonda, your turn. <laughs> Fall in love with him. You know, we, we need to be able to set our affection and our love upon him. That's how we prepare. Love him. Love him. Because why? When you love him, you'll receive his love. And when you love Jesus with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you're going to find his presence. You're going to find his peace. You're going to find provision. You're going to find power. You're going to find what you have need of. How many of you know that Jesus has called you his son, his daughter? How many of you know that he is our father? We are his children. How many of you believe that he said that I'm going to take care of you? I'm going to take care of you. Whatever you have need, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to provide for you. Matter of fact, you're going to be a light in the midst of the darkness. Matter of fact, you're going to be a witness in the midst of people who need to see my power and my presence. Loving him. Love him in the morning. Love him all day long. Love him at night. Go to bed loving him. How many of you know we need to fall in love with him over and over again? Yeah. You know, and if we love him, if we love him, then we're going to fall in love with his word. Number two. Yeah. Love him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Fall in love with his word. How many of you just love the word? You know, just thank the Lord for how would we know what's happening today? How would we know anything if it wasn't for the word? How many of you spend time in prayer? How many of you find his word very powerful when you're praying? How would you know to pray if it wasn't for the word? But if you love the word, if you fall into love, it's the lamp unto our feet, the light unto our path. Amen. My words, they are spirit and they are life. And so when you love him and you love the word and you're reading, you know, and some people, you know, sometimes you're optimistic and sometimes you're pessimistic. But yet God's word is very optimistic and it builds you up and it strengthens you and encourages you. You know, yes, it convicts you. And when it convicts us, we need to repent. Can we say amen? amen? And we repent of our sin and say we're laying aside every weight and every sin that would what? So easily beset us. But get into the word. Jesus prophesied. Listen, goes back to prophecy. He said, listen, there's going to be many false Christs that's going to come in my name. Yes. Yes. He said there's going to be many deceivers. That's going to come in the last days. And you know it was warned. And God has given warning. So how do we know the truth? You know the truth because you know the word. Yes. And if it doesn't align with the word. Then it needs to be kicked out. Amen. Yes. You know kicked out of your mind. But see when you know the word. And you love the word. Then you can see the phony. And you can see the counterfeit. I guarantee you get on YouTube or you get, you know, a, I'm telling you what, there's all types of different prophecies and this is what's going to happen and that's going to happen and X, Y, Z. Does it align with the word? Is it a man's opinion or is it the word of God is my question. And so if you know the word, you don't have to be fearful. You don't have to be afraid, but you can be secure in the arms of the Lord. How many of you know the Bible says that we're in Christ and Christ is in us? How many of you know if Christ is in us and the power of the Holy Spirit is in us, that means God is in us. Amen. How many of you know that? Over and over again, how many times have God spoke to his people? Don't fear. Don't be afraid. How many times have God said, listen, have faith and not fear? And for us to be able to know that. And so when you fall in love with Jesus and you fall in love with the Lord, you know, and, and fall in love with the, the word of God, then you're going to know the truth. And he said, my word is truth. And the truth will what? Make you free. Amen. How many of you know we need to know the truth? See, and look at all of the people. Pastor Joe, what are you talking about? Well, look at all of the people. See, the Quran, where did it come from? 
Muhammad had an encounter with a demonic being. That's right. He had an encounter, and what does he do? He writes the Quran. Where does the Mormon church come from? Where is the Book of Mormon? John Smith had an encounter with the demonic being, and there's another. There's the Book of the Mormon. Millions of people are following, and I could go on and on and on. So there's many people, many people that are deceived, and God does not want you and I to be deceived. So we're preparing now, right? You know, just like the Ukrainian people, if they would prepare, you know, and even Jesus says, hey, listen, if you knew the thief was coming, wouldn't you prepare? Isn't that what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24? If you knew that he was coming, wouldn't you prepare? Well, I'm telling you, the God of this world has an evil plan to be able to kill, steal, and destroy. And God wants us to be able to be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Can we say Amen. I believe that we need today. How do you prepare? Lord, I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want overflowing capacity running in my heart and my life. Lord, I don't want Joe. I want Jesus. I want the power of the Holy Spirit. On Wednesday nights, we've been talking about, you know, the book of Acts. And uh, Wednesday night, we talked about, and you shall receive power. After the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you receive power. Can we shout it? Power, power, Holy Ghost power. Power to what? To power to manifest the power of God in your heart and my heart and to this world. Amen. Power to witness, to be able to bring glory and honor to his name. I don't know about you, but I need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I need to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be fearful. But I want to stand and shout and sing. And I'm going to give God praise no matter what happens. Can you say amen, amen, and amen, and amen? How do we prepare? And have mountain-moving faith. Oh, God, help us to have faith. That's where we... Listen... If you've fallen in love with Jesus and you're full of Jesus and you're full of the Holy Spirit and you're full of the Word, well, the devil hates you, number one, but God loves you and God cares for you. But yet God wants to be able to bring revival to this nation and you could be the fire starter. Can we say amen? amen. Be the fire starter. How far are, is America going to sink? That's been my question. How far are we going to sink until our nation leaders begin to say, we need to pray? How far? What's going to happen? How, how long are we going to go down this road before they begin to say, we need to pray? Well, how many of you believe that the church is interceding now? Uh, you know, my personal opinion, why is America around today? I believe it's because of praying people are praying for God's mercy and grace today. You see this mess that is happening? Listen, God is not mocked. I'm yeah. telling you, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a nation sows, that nation's going to reap. Yeah, right. You know, and I believe that we're here today because of a people crying out and begging and saying, God, have mercy. God, save my mom, save my dad, save my brother, save my sister. God, Lord, you know, I thank the Lord for the, um, the words that came from uh, Abraham when he was uh, interceding for Lot in the Sodom and Gomorrah. And he asked God this question, will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? And God says, you know, far be it that you would destroy the righteous with the wicked. And he interceded. How many of you know when you intercede, God did a work. You know, in through Abraham for Lot and Lot and his family or those, you know, it ended up just being, you know, his two daughters in the end. But yet God is a merciful God. Can we say amen? But yet we continue to pray for this nation. We have to pray. I don't know what you're doing with your time, but I bet you I just I'm, I know I just feel it in my spirit. If the Ukrainian people knew what was happening. Or what was going to happen, I think that they would have more prayer meetings. Really. I, I believe that they would have been a little bit more serious with their relationship with the Lord. And so that's what we need to do. We need that we're walking in uncharted territory. And my concern, not fear, but my concern is for those who don't know Christ. I'm going to ask the praise team to come.
So are you preparing? Is your heart right today with God? See, the voice of the bridegroom keeps going out. In other words, he's given invitation. I said God's given invitation. How many of you know salvation is a gift of God? And how many of you know he keeps reaching out? He keeps reaching out. And he's saying, listen, I love you. I bled for you. I died for you. Would you come? Would you surrender your life? Would you be willing to surrender your life for me? And that's what God is asking. That I want to save you. I want you to have that assurance that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I don't want you to think, oh, I don't know if I'm going to heaven or not. That isn't what God wants from his people. He wants you to have that know-so salvation that you know, that you know, I know. How do you know? Because you have repented. You have turned your life over to the Lord. You are not just a Sunday Christian. You are a Christian 24-7. Can we say amen? And so God is speaking. God is speaking to his church. He's speaking to us. And he is saying, listen, if you don't know me, today is the day of salvation. Come, get your heart right with me. You know, I'm up here every Sunday morning and I give an invitation. And maybe sometimes because we hear it so much that we just maybe tune this time out of the service. But I'm telling you, the day and hour is going to come where you wish that you would have that opportunity. And so God wants us to be able to prepare today. Can we say amen? Maybe you are saying, Pastor Joe, well, I know I'm saved and, and I know I'm born again. But God, I need more of God. I need more of God. I was, Ashlyn just tickled me Wednesday night and, and she was uh, just, she said, I apologize, Pastor Joe, but I just got to tell everybody how much I love Jesus and how he's my whole life. And Pastor Joe, I'm so sorry. I said, Ashlyn, don't never apologize. And this morning, Leneva was just bubbling over. Just let me tell you about the presence of God. And how many of you know when you're filled with the Holy Spirit? <laughs> how many of you know that the joy of the Lord is your strength? Amen. Everything that we talked about this morning, God's in control. I believe God is sovereign. And when you know his love and his grace, your mind is not upon destruction. Your mind is upon the goodness and the grace of God. And your mind is, how can I serve you? How can I help you? But how many of you know we got to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Yes. And maybe you have never made time to get into the Word. I'm encouraging you. Put that on your calendar. Put that a part of your agenda every day. Daily. Everybody shout, daily. Yes. Daily. Get in the Word. Daily. Yes. Meditate upon the Word. Daily. Uh, eat the Word. Drink the Word. Then spend time in the presence of God. It's the most important thing that you can do to prepare. You know, we, we can talk about the end times. I can, but I don't see the benefit of talking about the end times all the time. I see the benefit of talking about salvation and the love of God and the grace of God and come. How many of you know Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost? How many of you know he already knows, you know, what's going to happen today, tomorrow, and all eternity? But his words would go out into the highways and the byways and what? Compel him to come in. Isn't that his desire? He's already told us. You know, this world is going to pass away. Peter says it's going to pass away with fervent heat. You know, they're talking about global warming. Two different types of global warming here. It isn't what man's going to do. It's what God's going to do. And he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. Isn't that incredible? He's going to create. God said he's going to do it. And he's going to set up his kingdom here upon this earth. And we're going to, he's going to rule and reign with him. And we're going to rule and reign with him. How many of you want to be a part of that program, if you will? But the benefit is to be able to speak into the lives of people. Yes. And when you have an opportunity, well, Diane, what's going on? Then Diane has an opportunity to share with somebody that don't know Jesus. Yes. When somebody's asking Josh, Josh, what's going on? Josh is able, well, let me tell you what's going on. Yes.
when anybody else, when you're, you have an opportunity, what's going on? Well, let me tell you what's going on. Let me tell you what Jesus has done. Let, let me tell you why he came, why he bled, why he died, right? The message never gets old. His love never gets old. You must be born again. Can we say amen? Can we all stand this morning? Uncharted territory. I'm so glad that I know where my destiny is. How about you? Are you glad you know where your destiny is? Can we say amen? Father, this morning we're just thankful for your love, your mercy, your grace. God, your presence and your power is so real and so strong. And Lord, you sustain us. God, you see those that are here this morning, and you're the one who peers into the hearts and the lives of your people. And God, you know those, oh Lord, who need you. And if there's one here by the sound of my voice that does not know you, Lord, that never surrendered their hearts and their lives. Maybe they said a prayer, but God, they've never really surrendered their hearts and lives to you. I pray today that they would surrender their heart and their life to you. God, I pray, Lord, that they would fall in love with you. I pray, God, that you would be their first love. And God, if other things has got in the way, God, I pray that today there'll be a renewal of the vows. God, that you are first place in my life, and I love you. So, Father, I pray that if there's one here that doesn't know you, that today will be the day that they totally surrender their life. God, I pray, Lord, today, if there's one here, Lord, that, who desires, oh God, to be filled with your Holy Spirit, I pray that they begin to hunger and thirst and say, God, this is what I have need of, Lord. I have need of you. Fill me with overflowing capacity. Fill me, oh God, with your might and your power. Fill me, Lord God. Father, that I will, Lord God, glorify your name upon this earth. God, help me, Lord. Uh, Lord, discipline my life to get in the word and stay in the word. God, help me, God, to have a hunger. Lord, I pray for desires for you, Lord God, and the things of the kingdom, Lord God. And Father, we just pray for every individual that is here today. God, that we will pray and intercede. Lord, we're praying for those in Ukraine. We're praying for those, oh God, in Israel. We're praying for those all around the world. But God, I'm praying for those here in America. God, we're praying for this nation, oh God, that we would repent, that we would turn back to you, that we would call upon the name of the Lord. God, we pray, help us to be intercessors. Lord, as Abraham interceded for Lot, oh God, help us to be intercessors. And God, as Paul poured out, Lord, his life into Timothy, help us, oh God, to pour out our lives into others, oh Lord. Lord, the ladies, oh God, pouring out into other ladies, oh God, and men pouring out into other men. God, help us, oh God. Help us to be a good, good student of your word, knowing your word. So, Father, we pray that today, Lord God, that we renew our vows and our commitments. And, Lord, as we move forward, that we're not afraid and we're not walking in fear. But, God, your presence and your power just overwhelms us. And we just thank you, Lord. Lord, have your way today. In Jesus' name.